because this is going to be a short meditation session. You want to make sure that you're really doing it. Lay down the law. Okay. No other thoughts except for thoughts about the breath. If any thoughts do come in, you're not going to follow them. You're going to hang on to the breath for dear life. We don't have much quantity. You really have to work on the quality. And it's good practice. Makes you realize you can get the mind to settle down really quickly. And then you take that lesson to the next time you sit for longer periods of time, where the mind has a tendency to want to just gradually glide down and finally reach concentration toward the end of the period. Remember, you can get down really quickly. You know where your spot is. You know what kind of breathing is comfortable. Well, go right there. And part of the mind will complain, well, I don't know what to do with myself when I'm there for that long. But this is where you learn the important skill of maintaining. Realizing that you've got something valuable, you don't want it to throw it away. And part of the mind wants to say, well, I want some entertainment, I want to do something else. You have to remind that part of the mind that there are some skills you're going to need. And one is to be able to stay with one object really continuously. When aging comes, when illness comes, when death comes, thoughts will start crowding into the mind. Worries about this, regrets about that. You know, have to be really firm with yourself that you're not going to go there. And so learn some firmness now. Put down the law, lay down the law, and stick with it. You're going to stay right here. And the mind will come around. It's like children. They complain about rules, but you realize that children who have clear cut rules that they live by and their parents don't make lots of exceptions, those are the ones who feel most secure. Well, the mind is the same way. When you've learned how to be firm with yourself, it finally settles down and is much happier in the long run. So there are times when you have to treat your mind like an ignorant little child. Who complains and wants this and says it wants this and says it wants that doesn't really know what it, what would be good for it, what would really make it happy. It's just got some random vagrant notion has come into the mind, come into its head, and so you've got to be firm with it. Sometimes you reason with it. Sometimes you simply say, "Nope, we're just not going to do that at all," and the mind will settle down and actually find ultimately that it really likes being here. This is why John Swat made that comment that one time about the people meditating in Massachusetts. They seemed so grim about their meditation because they hadn't learned the lessons that come from generosity and virtue, where things that may seem difficult in the beginning actually are good for you in the long run, and they're a cause for joy and happiness, the realization that you've developed these skills. So when the mind is obstreperous, remind yourself, okay, it's like being like a little child. And you've got to be firm. And eventually the child is going to thank you.